quantum computing is is interesting to me because it is the again governed by the ultimate laws of physics as we know them. So it does tell you what the ultimate limit of computational power is. The most fundamental difference between a quantum computer and a classical computer is uh, really based on this idea of superposition. A classical bit can be either on or off. In a quantum computer, you have those same two states, but the fundamental difference is those qubits instead of bits can be in both the zero state and the one state, or the on state and the off state simultaneously. We're very focused on the, the control aspect of these qubits, developing our custom hardware, our custom compilers. We have a special element that we have access to in these devices called a Joseph's Injunction. The Joseph's Injunction allows you to build a circuit uh, where the energy levels are not equally spaced. It looks very much like the standard computer chip that you'd buy. We mount them in our dilution refrigerators, which cool them down to approximately 10 millikelvin, where there's now extra excitations in the system. Current computers throw away a lot of information and a lot of uh, power that we know is there in nature. If we build quantum computers, we're essentially taking advantage of all the power and all the information that we know is in natural systems. The promise of the technology is incredible. Uh, it's something where effectively you create a game-changing technology that does not exist now. You could design new materials. You could apply uh, quantum simulation to uh, to biological systems or, or chemical systems. Computers are never good enough. We're always trying to build them faster. We're always trying to build them better. There's just certain things that a quantum computer can do that, in a practical sense, a classical computer cannot.